Hello everybody and welcome to our podcast, Let's Talk About Death. My name is Nick Davis. I am a soul midwife. In the same way that a midwife helps a soul to come into this world, a soul midwife accompanies and supports a soul as they depart this world. My role is non-medical and I provide emotional, psychological and spiritual support to people as they go on their journey home along with their family and loved ones. I am joined tonight on the podcast, as always, by Dr. Katie Maloney, who is a GP with many years experience and also a a specialist interest in palliative care. So before we dive into tonight's episode, just really wanted to set some context about why we feel it's so important to have this conversation. It is perhaps the most difficult, but also the most necessary conversation of all. And it is the subject that very few people want to talk about, not even in the medical profession we find, because it's the sum of all of our fears, but also the most unavoidable human experience of all. And therein lies the paradox, because not talking about or having some kind of a relationship with death doesn't make it any less scary or heartbreaking. In fact, based on our experience, it makes it more so. Over the years, death has become a largely medical event, one to be avoided at all costs, and that often means people access palliative care far too late or use their last dying days chasing false hopes of recovery rather than spending it with their loved ones and finding a way to make peace with the inevitable or missing the opportunity to say all that needs to be said, or not finding the time to heal the wounds and rifts that often occur in life. The avoidance of honest conversations about death is not kind, nor compassionate, nor helpful. It can often leave people feeling lonely, isolated, bereft, confused, and also scared of what they imagine is to come. Families and loved ones are ravaged by doubt and anxiety about the part they will need to play, what they can and cannot say and do, and so much precious time is wasted on things that have no consequence in the end. Honest conversations are really an act of love and compassion and care. They're what allows the dying person to access real choices and live out their final days as they want and need to. And I think it's fair to say that both Katie and I believe very passionately that finding ways to walk and support people facing end of life is within the grasp of us all and something we very much want to facilitate and enable to hand it back to the community so that we can all recognise death as the human and social event that it is rather than purely medical. And that's why we wanted to invite everybody to have these conversations. And tonight, what we would like to explore is faith. How how do people how do people really face the end of their life? Do they have faith? Do they not have faith? How does it help? How may it not help? And we just really wanted to share our experience and observations on this in the hope that we can illuminate and bring some light into those dark corners where the fear lies whenever we think about what the end might bring. So Katie and I come from very um, different places and I pause as I say that because I think we, although as Katie will tell us in a minute, you might think our approaches are different, I guess we're all looking at the same thing in a different way and that's often what we say to each other. So without further ado, I'm just going to hand over so that Katie can say hello and then we'll, we'll start having our chat. Hello. Yes. Yeah, so, um, yeah. Um, so I think it's a really important discussion, this, because how we cope with death, uh, I think, is determined greatly by our beliefs around afterlife and death and the purpose of being here and all those questions. Um, and you and I will have witnessed um, lots of different beliefs and how they affect someone as uh, near the end of life. So I come from a perspective of, um, I'm a Christian, 
um, a practicing Christian, so I attend church every Sunday. And I'm a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, known to many as Mormons. Um, we're essentially Christians, so we read the Bible. Um, and uh, so we believe in life, um, in a pre-existence, so a life before this life, this life, a time of trial and testing and learning and growing, and um, the an afterlife, so a life after death, um, where we describe as being in heaven. Um, and we believe in the family relationships that we have and the friendships that we have and um, the acquaintances, that they carry on into the next life. So we describe um, passing on as, as sort of passing almost like through a veil. In fact, we describe it as a veil. So that moving on into the next life or the next room even, that it's just simply a passing on from one room to the next. Um, but where the walls are really thin, so like a veil, um, so we're separated by this, this thin line, um, but that we are separated. So that death is a moving on into another life, but that that life um, is um, glorious. So it's something... Um, marvellous and something to look forward to where we're reunited with friends and family, um, family we've never met. Um, but, you know, yeah. And personally, for me, that belief is really reassuring. I find it really comforting. Um, it's great for me. But the challenge I have then is that I can't share that belief with patients. I am not allowed to preach. It's not appropriate that I preach to patients. So I can't put my beliefs onto my patients and say, well, don't worry, there's a life after this. You mm -hmm. pass through the mm -hmm. veil and you'll be together with your family. Um, that may not be uh, in a place called heaven. You know, that, that may mm. not be their beliefs. Mm. Um, so I can't, I can't preach and it's not appropriate that I do. But I also, if they have very different beliefs to me, I don't always know how to reassure them mm. without putting my beliefs on them. Um, yeah. But yeah, so... Maybe you yeah, might want to say what your beliefs are and, you know, how we differ, really, <laughs> yeah. you know, um, because actually often they're not that different. The perspectives no. we come from might be, but yeah. And that, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. So um, I think if you, uh, not, I'm not going to take all the listeners through this, so don't worry, but if you looked at, you know, a CV for Katie and I on paper, you probably wouldn't match us in a room and yet here we are having been friends for a number of years now we have never had crosswords you know hugely respectful mm -hmm. of our relative uh, beliefs and so forth and and actually we have been able to offer comfort well, you've certainly offered comfort to me on a number of occasions and I think certainly in the early years I had no idea what your belief system was so yeah. just to reassure you you have offered comfort mm -hmm. in your GP surgery beyond what you would normally expect of a GP and I didn't know that so as a as a sole midwife we are non-denominational so our role as sole midwife is very much to serve the needs of whoever we are supporting whatever our friend is going through so it's very much about understanding what it is they need what is important to them and absolutely serving those needs as best as we can and that's I think it's really important for me to be clear about what that non-denominational means it doesn't mean that you know on a personal level we we don't believe in anything we don't have our own personal faith it just means that as a soul midwife very much like when you're a gp you know our role is to is to look at our friends and to help them to be able to um find their way with death in the best way possible generally through listening you know, clarifying, listening some more, staying in that space, allowing those uncomfortable conversations to happen. Um, on a personal level, it's, it's interesting when you say, what are your beliefs? I'm not sure I have a label that I can give myself because I think, you know, deep inside my heart, I believe in something. Do I believe in God? I, I actually don't know the answer to that. I, I think there is something I believe in, something greater, uh, be it the universe or whatever, I'm not sure. And I think, you know, I've often had that feeling. And I think what gives me on a personal level comfort is um, I think I resonate most with the concept of us having a soul. And I like to think of the soul going home. Now, I don't I don't really know what that means in an awful lot of detail for me, but I know it brings me comfort to think 
there is a um a clarity and and one of the things that i see consistently is is almost the you know the the love that everybody leaves you know mm. it's so lovely when we see our friends passing with all of their loved ones around them but mm. in in the real world out there not everybody is always within that type of environment but i still see that love being provided by people who come into contact with people that are passing there's something about death that very much brings love and compassion into people whether that's medical staff whether that's the wider caring staff whoever that may be whether that may a neighbor that is bringing in supplies because the person doesn't have close family and i think that is definitely that common denominator that no matter what there is some real sense of love and I think I would often observe as well, there is a real essence in all of us that I, I, I just feel somehow is more than our biology. It's more than the blood. It's more than our bones, it's more than our physical being. And even though, you know, when I think of loved ones that have passed, their physicality, they're no longer here as a person, that doesn't mean that I don't feel them, that, you know, when I think about them, it doesn't you know, bring a, a, a tear to my eye. And that's really interesting because people will often say to me, if, particularly if they say, ask me about my my dad, who was, you know, um, a, a, you know, of course everybody dies, right? And, and I think there's something here about the narrative in society. We're not prepared for it. So when I talk about the loss of my dad, you would say, well, it is actually the natural all human and we are all going to die. And as we get older, uh, you know, the probability of that happening, you, you pretty much get to 100% at some point. You know, that that is the reality. Mm-hmm. And yet, even knowing that, when you lose your parent, no matter what age they are, you, you kind of lose some of yourself. And, you know, you're not really prepared for it because we don't live in a world where where death is an integral part of how we live. It's, it's almost distanced. Mm-hmm. And people always talk about dying in a, in a whisper. And have you told them? And... You know, have you had the conversation? You know, like it's almost this kind of shameful thing that we have to hide. Um, I realise as normal, I'm going a little bit off piece here and I'm just about to lose my my thread of thought because my brain fog and menopause is kicking in, which is a whole different conversation for another day. Um, but there's, but but don't you find that uh, no matter what faith or belief or system you have, actually you're never ready my no. gran died at yeah. 99 and it was entirely right and we knew it was coming and she was in a residential home and got COVID. And, it, it, you know, it, it completely expected and I have my belief and I believe fully that she's going to be reunited with my granddad and, you know, be able to walk and run and laugh and sing and roller skate and do all those things that she loved doing. Um, but I still wasn't ready. I yeah. wasn't ready for her to go. I didn't want her to go. I didn't, it didn't, it didn't necessarily make it easier. Um, and I don't know that it made it easier for her knowing. And she talked about being reunited with granddad and, but I'm not sure she, she still didn't want to leave us. You know, it, it's, I think, yeah. And that's, yeah. <laughs> and thank you, Katie, because you have just now led the next bit, which is, I think faith for me is, is a sense of believing in something when you actually don't have surety, you don't have certainty. Mm. And, and death is the biggest thing of all because it's such an act of surrender. We don't know where we're going. We don't, you know, we, the, people are dying. Right? Yeah. They, they've, they, they've died, so they're not there to tell us that story. We may have a feeling, and very often people will say, oh, don't tell anybody because you might think I'm being silly, but I had a dream, or this, mm. or that. And there's that sense of, oh, I sound a bit silly because we live in a very scientific, tangible world. And and that was the other point that's really important before I lose it. I hope everybody's keeping up with this, 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 these random um, seeds that I can't seem to join together. I'm with anyway, you. I'm okay. with you. <laughs> when you were talking about your own faith um, and about not imposing it on others. Mm. And, and, and really the fact of the matter is, Faith is such a personal thing and it almost, I mean, it can be annoying if somebody tries to impose their faith system on you and it's its not where you're at. Mm. But it wouldn't necessarily bring comfort anyway because unless you believe 
yeah. in deep in our hearts. So I wonder whether the key is we just have to help people explore and find some honesty and authenticity in themselves about what it is they believe. And there isn't a right or wrong. We can all believe different things. It's what is it that in your heart of hearts, as your genuine, authentic self, mm. when you are coming to the end of this human life, going to whatever it is we do or do not go to, what is it that you need to find deep in your authentic self without worrying about what somebody else thinks, what somebody else mm. is saying, what somebody else believes, um, about something being right or wrong, whatever it is, what is it that you need? And I think in our roles, if we can help people access that, mm. that is where the comfort is to be found because that is where everybody's unique faith is. Yeah. So in some ways, that sounds complex. And in some ways, it's incredibly simple. It's quite simple. Yeah. But patients have asked me before, you know, especially relatives once they've lost someone. And I've been involved in the care. So they've known I've known them and I've known their relatives. And, and they come and they'll say, you know, and if they're struggling, they might, a few have said to me, well, what do you believe? And before I answer that, it's always a good idea to say, well, what do you believe? Yeah. Do you believe they're out there still somewhere? Do you feel them? Do you, you know... Do you, what, where are you with it? And then we go from there and I can share, you know, well, I believe this, I find that comforting. And they might pick bits of what I've said that make them think, yeah, I like to think that we'll be reunited. I like to think that. But in the end, it's what brings you peace and comfort. And yeah, and I think most of us find peace and comfort in then not being a complete end. I think that's quite a difficult concept to get your head around. Yeah. But that that's it. Yeah. We're, we're too good for it, that to be it. As you say, we're more than flesh and bones, aren't we? We're, there's the soul, we refer to it as the spirit, but it is that kind of, that there's, there's our personality, our nature is, is something more. Yeah, yeah it's something, it's quite nuanced, skin, isn't it? Skin's just a shell. Yeah, you know, it's difficult to put mm. our finger yeah. on that. Yeah. And, and I guess it comes back down to it's what, what do each, each person in that, what do they need for that comfort? And mm -hmm. and I think for those listening, I think one of the things that I hope will bring comfort, whether you are yourself facing your own mortality or accompanying loved ones mm -hmm. on their journey. Katie, I don't know how you feel, but time and time again, what I would see as people go through the journey, you know, I would, I would absolutely say the death is a process in the same way mm -hmm. birth is a process. It has stages. Um, you know, we can see where people are according to how they're doing. And actually, I think um, some of it is allowing the process of death in the same way that we allow a birth to mm. progress. We allow a death to progress. And, and that balance of knowing when it's right to intervene, uh, to, um, you know, facilitate, provide comfort, provide pain relief, but at the same time, not actually stop the process of death. One of the things I found in the earlier processes, um, when we are uh, still, you know, really quite with it, quite, mm. I, I struggled to find the right word, quite human, let's say, you know, we're still engaged mm. in life, we're still probably eating, probably not quite as much. You know, as we go through the process, we, we do lose our strength, mobility, you know, we lose our appetite, we sleep more. And as time goes on, we're just engaging with the world less and we're, we're sleeping more, often having, you know, bouts of unconsciousness. And it's interesting today, I was saying to Katie, I was reading about this and, you know, effectively as humans, we don't know when we're unconscious. So when somebody's been unconscious, so as we near, uh, I'm sure Katie will correct me if I'm wrong, because I'm kind of stepping on medical waters here. I don't know if you can step on water, but you know what I mean. Um, You'll uh, just drown. Oh yeah, I'll just drown. Yeah, exactly. That's what's going to happen right now. Right, I'm just going to drown. So, um, <laughs> sorry, I'm a strong swimmer. <laughs> I'm not, I can't help you. Oh, thanks. <laughs> You're my GP. <laughs> so anyway, um, <laughs> and one of the things mm. is we, we think people are sleeping for longer and very often they're actually having bouts of being unconscious for longer. Mm. Um, but we don't know that. So when we eventually wake somebody, they'll still have had a lovely sleep. Mm. And then eventually what happens, and um, this is really medical, so um, Kate is either going to be despairing or really impressed with me, is that um, – when we are unconscious, when our brain is in an unconscious state, the only part of it that works is our breathing, our respiratory system. Mm. 
Da-da. Oh, she's slowly, nodding. The brain slowly she's shuts nodding. down in phases yes. and leaves you really with the sort of brainstem, the yes. end, which is your sort of reflexes like breathing, swallowing, that sort of thing. And eventually mm. you take a breath out, but you just don't take that breath in. And, you know, mm. I've heard of stories where, you know, medical staff go into the room and the, and the families may not even know the patient or the friend mm. has passed. You know, it is not some massive dramatical thing that we see on the films. It can be a, generally a really ethereal and beautiful process mm. but as we as i've seen people get to that stage which is mm. what we in psalm midwifery refer to as an air stage which seems very um fitting 99 I, I, I don't know anybody um i don't know anybody who has said anything uh contrary to this um people say to me i am ready and there is something that happens as our physical bodies let go that really switches our psychology from the the fight and the the fear mm. and the unknown and the grief you know we talk about grief when we've lost loved ones but when we are on the we're well, on the path of dying but when mm. we are you know the, the clock has been started i think that that grief is we forget about the personal grief you know, the, the person who's dying is They're grieving. losing something too. Yeah. And, and every milestone, mm. everything that changes, every food you no know, longer want to eat, mm. every step you can no longer take. It's a loss. It, mm. It's a loss, you know. Mm. All of these are really significant steps that, that need gentle, compassionate holding of the mm. space for, mm. for that. And always there is a point people get to where they say, I am ready. Now, that doesn't mean that... Mm -hmm. uh people will not be scared or or worried but there is absolutely a, a transition a progress a, a journey mm -hmm. where people say i'm ready and that's very often as well where i see people may not have talked about faith but they may explore it at yes. that stage and you know that these aren't all of a sudden sitting up in bed and going, I found a belief in, in, in God or whatever it may be. It's much more subtle and gentle than that. Yeah. They start to speak in more reassuring terms of, yes. yeah, leaving but not really leaving or, you know, I'm okay. they're still there, they're still watching over their loved ones, yeah. they're okay there. Yeah, I'll be okay, you'll be okay. Yes. Definitely. There's an Always. Inner, inner knowing. That's yeah. probably how I describe it. There's like an inner knowing that comes yeah. into them and it brings with it a sense. The energy is so much more peaceful, mm. you know. And that's no matter what you believe. That's yes. if you believe that actually this life is it and the end is the end, that's fine. You're still ready for that end. Um, or if you believe you're going on somewhere else, again, it doesn't really... It doesn't matter. Everybody gets there. And you're right. I, I thought about this when we spoke about it earlier and we were saying we were going to talk about this. And, and I thought, have I ever seen anyone who hasn't got there? No, I haven't. In answer to your question. No, no, always. Uh, that is, it is a stage everyone gets to. It's right because it's right. Yeah, because it is a process and it is a natural process. Yeah. And it is in all of us to cope with it because we're made to cope with it. Yeah. Because we have to. And I think the thing that I would observe is that um, how people get there can vary a lot. Definitely. And that is something. So how we die, I think, matters enormously. And whilst we may not have agency and control over the fact that, you know, maybe we don't, I mean, you could say that we're always dying before we're ready. <laughs> it's part of the human condition. You know, what, what's the cause of death? Oh, I was born. Y you know, you were always going to die before we're ready. Mm. You know, I'm not sure. Um, but the process of getting to that place of inner knowing and acceptance and peace can be um, varying for people. And I think as companions, as all of us, you know, not just me as a soul midwife and KTCP, everybody, every human being um, that connects with another, as fellow human beings, we can hold that space to allow people to explore their fears, to have authentic, honest conversations, to rage, to cry, to have moments of joy, whatever it is. Because uh, Dr. Edith Eager, the Holocaust survivor, um, who you know, she's in her 90s and she's still putting out new content and doing courses and is just it's such a role model. 
but she always has this saying that expression will never lead to depression. What you let out will not harm you. What you keep inside will will eat you. It will it will really harm you. And once you start to express whatever it is that you need to express, you then have a choice about what you want to do with it. How long do you want to hold on to it? What do you want to turn it into? And that's, I think, really prevalent during the dying process. And I remember um, one story, uh, a fairly, yeah, she was young, a young mum with terminal cancer and medical staff around her was saying, you know, you're, you're depressed. And I'm thinking, I'm reading this story thinking, of, uh, actually, that's probably pretty Quite reasonable. Right. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, you know, she's, yeah. that these, there's yeah. probably a reasonable response to a, a set of pretty unreasonable circumstances that she's, she's facing. Yeah. And a, a therapist came in to see her and they wanted to, um, uh, you know, give us some medication to help with the depression, which, you know, may be absolutely fine in certain circumstances. I'm not knocking that for one minute. You know, everything's about context and so forth. But what she said was, what I actually wanted was somebody who was prepared to sit in that room and let me rage and yes. absolutely let all of my anger and fear and desperation and just um, real, just madness at the world. At the, yeah, because the, the world is random, right? It is random. It doesn't matter how much we try and persuade ourselves that we have control and we have it all sorted. Life is a random set of circumstances that we're... You know, faith is this wonderful thing that's helping us kind of take a bridge from one of those random things to the next, right? And it's not about everything's going to be okay. It's about everything is going to be okay in this moment right now. And that's what she needed. And that was the best medicine we could have given her was let that woman let it out. I think that's the danger is that it's easy to try and uh, move someone too fast through that process yes. because it's uncomfortable for you. Um uh, and, and it is uncomfortable um, to have someone rage in front of you and 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 scream and cry and 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 lose it. You know that. Oh, is it? Because we've is... done it a lot. I've done it a lot. With it's you. uncomfortable. Mate. <laughs> Do you want me to stop? <laughs> no, it's what I'm there for. <laughs> okay, okay, good. But it is uncomfortable, <laughs> and so you can see why the instinct is the same, particularly. For example, if you've got a faith, to say to someone, but it's all right because you believe this. And so, you know, you know you'll be all right in the end. You know you're going on somewhere better. In the moment, that is not reassuring. They don't need to hear that. They need to be allowed to rage, feel the unfairness of it and, and shout about it and be angry at it. It's still unfair. I have felt angry. I've lost patients who were young with kids and I have felt angry. And no belief in the world is going to stop me feeling angry on their behalf I am not reassured. I am angry. It is not fair. They are allowed to feel that as well, no matter what faith system they have. And it, you just, you can't rush that process to acceptance. Yes. You yes. can't force someone into the accepting phase because it would be more comfortable for you. Yeah. Um, their faith will get them there. Their belief and whatever um, will get them there. They might discover that belief in the acceptance phase, but in the end, you can't, you can't force it. You can't no, absolutely rush them through not. that. And I think what gets them there um is is that uh permission to, mm. to to allow them to have the agency and to be empowered about how they express and at what pace they choose to go for because you know what we don't know people's real deep life stories we don't know what they need to go over we don't know mm. how deep those wounds really were you know we, we don't know mm. what kind of review and reflection needs to take place on. mm. uh, and one of the things that i would say um having seen people die with and without um, what we would, mm. I suppose, in our world term as faith. And, yeah. and I caveat that because I think, you know, you could you could say that believing that it is the end is, is somebody's faith. It's still a That's belief, a faith. Right? It's still a belief. It's still yeah. a faith. So whether whatever faith or whatever belief, mm. whatever perspective, using these words to try mm. and encompass everything, people die with, I would not say in my, I think mm. probably limited experience compared mm. to yours, mm. has uh, made the death more or less peaceful. What mm. I would say has made the death more or less peaceful is when people have not been given the time to express and reflect and deal with deep wounds and trauma. And when they take that with them, when they carry that extra baggage on the journey, mm. that's when I have seen the pattern. Yeah. That it's more difficult 
to get to the place of acceptance. You will always get there because the, you know, the, you the, the process mm -hmm. of death will, it's mm -hmm. going to happen whether, whether you're on that boat or not. Well, you kind of are on it. Yeah. You know, you're yeah. going you can't fight you, it. You can't fight yeah. it. You know, yeah. it, there's a point it, you have to it's stop leaving fighting. The dock whether you want it to or not. Yeah. 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 No, that would be my experience as well. Yeah. Okay. But there's no, I, I can't say people who believe this do much better in end of life. They are calmer. They are, it is, they are fine with it. Now, nah, there's no, in the end, it's having the time and the space and people around you to support you. Um, yeah. And maybe healing. That repairing yeah. um yeah finding peace you finding your peace and yeah. and i think that's it it's it's people have to find their own peace we can't give it to them yeah. we can't tell them what it is yeah. we can't tell them what the yeah. timeline is or how it should be found yeah. i think if anything i would perhaps sum up and say if there's one thing any of us can do you know those there's, there's that book isn't there the small things that make such enormous differences is uh, actually, it's more than one thing I can't count, obviously, is to sit in that space with somebody, mm. allow them to say what it is they need to say without interrupting, trying to solve it, trying judging, to rush them through trying it. to rudge it, uh, and rush it. Well, I haven't been drinking, not yet, actually, I'm cutting into wine time, but <laughs> anyway. Um, and nearly lost my point then, uh, and there's another really important point before I leave this, because it is really, really important, not rushing them, ah, uh, and the power of the silence and that power of silence and and you know if there's something we can introduce mm -hmm. into schools it's that active empathetic listening where we don't shut somebody down by trying to make it better yeah it's not going to change because that doesn't just apply to this scenario no. it applies to everything and everyone yeah. it's like a bit of a muscle yeah. we need to work on right yeah but that's not that hard it's it can be learnt very easily. Yeah. Well, yeah, we're getting there, right? <laughs> so I think, I think that brings um, tonight's conversation. Yeah, I think we're, we've probably, is there anything you, more you want to say on faith, Katie, before we close this up? I, I would like to hear from listeners um, if, yeah, their faith system really, and I say faith system because I, I want to cover everything. It's, yeah, we talk about faith. I think you automatically think of sort of Christian beliefs or, you know, but but actually, I mean, yeah, I'm always aware that I come from one angle, one very narrow angle. And I would love to hear other people's perspective on how their belief system, especially if your belief system is that that, that the end is the end and that's OK. Yeah. Um, but the, how that how they find that reassuring, how it helps them. Um, yeah. I would like to hear from listeners. Yeah, absolutely echo that. And I think it is that diversity and that understanding of the the wide range of perspectives that can only ever help us all. This isn't about it being one thing or the other or believing this or believing that. It's about how do we collectively share and then pick up those things in the basket that we go, ah, that, that resonates with me. That bring us peace. That, yeah. that might bring me some Comfort. peace. That's something that I would like to pick up. I'm not so sure about that, but actually that that's feeling peaceful and comforting to me. So as ever, thank you so much for joining us for this conversation. As always, we, we really want to have a conversation about the things on this subject that you want to talk about, the listeners. So please reach out either to the Newark radio station or you can reach out directly to me on my website, which is www.nickdavis, which is N-I-K-D-A-V-I-S.com. We will always treat everything in confidence. You really are free to ask us whatever it is that you need to, to talk about in the hope that we can all have these conversations to enable us to live more fully, more authentically, more loving, more connected uh, and just make the very most of the time we have here and be able to walk alongside our fellow humans when it's time to say our goodbyes. So thank you very much for joining us and I'm sure we will speak to you again soon. Mm -hmm.